8th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 8 lesson 1 the areas of squares and their side lengths number one find the area of each square each grid square represents one square unit square a has nine complete square units and several fractions of square units I'm decomposing square A, taking the fractions of the square units, and then reassembling them, creating whole square units. This will give me a clear illustration of the area of square A. This is the last of the fractions of square units. So as you can see here, we have a total of 17 square units. So I can say that the surface area for square A is 17 square units. Square B has 12 complete square units and several fractions of square units. Like I did with square A, I can decompose and then compose using fractions of square units to complete whole square units. Here you can see that square B has a total of 20 square units. To find the area in square units for squares C and D, I'll use the same strategy of decomposing and composing. Here you can see that the surface area for square C is 13 square units. If you pay attention, as you decompose and compose, you'll notice that a pattern develops. Here on the top side of the square, you'll see that there are three composed square units. On the left side of the square, there are three more, and on the bottom of the square, there are three more. And now on the right side, you'll see that there's three more. You could save a lot of time by recognizing this pattern. All you'd have to do is compose one of the sides and you can predict the total of square units for that particular square. The surface area for square D is 37 square units. Number two, find the length of the side of a square if its area is A, 81 square inches. Since the side lengths of squares are always equal, the length of one side times the length of the other side will always equal the square's area. 9 squared, or 9 times 9, is 81. Square A has 9 inch side lengths. If an area of a square is 49 hundredths square units, or 0.49 square units, then the side lengths must be 7 tenths, or 0.7, because 0.7 times 0.7 equals 0.49, or 7 tenths times 7 tenths equals 49 hundredths. The side lengths for square C are 7 tenths of a unit, if the area of a square is m units squared, then its side lengths must be m, because m times m is m squared, or m units squared. Square D has m units side lengths. Number 3. Find the area of a square if its side length is a 3 inches. 3 inches times 3 inches equals 9 square inches. A square with side lengths 3 inches long would have an area of 9 square inches. Find the area of a square if its side length is 7 units. 7 times 7 is 49, so the area would be 49 square units, or 49 units squared. Find the area of a square if its side length is 100 centimeters. A side length of 100 centimeters times a side length of 100 centimeters would equal 10,000 centimeters squared. 
so the area would be 10,000 centimeters squared. Find the area of a square if its side length is 40 inches. A 40 inch side length times a 40 inch side length equals 1600 square inches. The area of this square would be 1600 inches squared. Find the area of a square if its side length is x units. x times x equals x squared. The area of this square would be x square units or x units squared. Number four from eighth grade unit seven lesson 14. Evaluate three and one tenth times 10 to the fourth times two times 10 to the sixth. Choose the correct answer. Three and one tenth times two equals six and two tenths. So that eliminates A and B. 10 to the fourth times 10 to the sixth. That equals 10 to the tenth, which eliminates D. So the correct answer is C. Six and two tenths times 10 to the tenth. Number five from eighth grade, unit seven, lesson 15. Noah reads the problem. Evaluate each expression, giving the answer in scientific notation. The first problem part is five and four tenths times 10 to the fifth, plus two and three tenths times 10 to the fourth. Noah says, I can rewrite five and four tenths times 10 to the fifth as 54 times 10 to the fourth. Now I can add the numbers. 54 times 10 to the fourth plus two and three tenths times 10 to the fourth equals 56 and three tenths times 10 to the fourth. Do you agree with Noah's solution to the problem? Explain your reasoning. Five and four tenths times 10 to the fifth equals 54 times 10 to the fourth. It does equal 56 and three tenths times 10 to the fourth. Converted to scientific notation, it would be five and 63 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. So I disagree. Noah's answer was not in scientific notation. Number six, from eighth grade, unit seven, lesson six. Select all the expressions that are equivalent to three to the power of eight. A, three squared to the power of four. Three squared to the power of four is equivalent to three to the power of eight. B, eight to the power of three is the same as eight times eight times eight, which equals 512 not 6,561, which is what three to the power of eight equals. C, three times 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 three, which is three to the power of eight and equal to 6,561. D, three to the fourth to the power of two. That is equal to three to the power of eight. E, three to the sixth power over three to the second power. That equals three to the eighth power over one, which equals three to the eighth power. F, three to the sixth power times 10 to the second power. That equals 30 to the eighth power. So that does not equal three to the eighth power. Tutorials for 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. Share. Consider subscribing. Check out more tutorials. Thank you and see you next time.